With the rise of AI code editors, making UI designs for your app is now very easy. Using AI code editors like Kesa, Windsurf, Alex, or GitHub Copilot. So you can visit a site like Mobian and pick any screen. You take a screenshot or download the screen as an image and upload it to an AI code editor to generate the screen for you to start creating your app. You can also go to a site like Dribble and find some UI designs. Take a screenshot or download any image you like and upload it to any AI code editor to generate UIs for your app. In this example, I'm going to use Xcode and Alex. However, you can use a tool like Kesa, Windsurf, or GitHub Copilot to achieve the same thing. On the left side of the Xcode window, you can see I have Alex. Using Alex, we get a seamless Xcode integration. So in this example, I will visit the Mobian site again. Over here, I will press Shift Command and 4 to take a screenshot of the screen. Next, I will open Xcode together with Alex. So over here, you can see I have uploaded the same screen. We just took a screenshot from the Mobian website and also added this prompt. We want to use this image as reference to create Swift UI views. Also, I stated further so that the AI model uses Swift UI's toolbar to represent the items at the top part of the page. The private section contains a list and also the bottom part of the screen has a tab bar. Lastly, I mentioned to the model to create multiple files if necessary. Over here, you have noticed we have the option to select from different models. In this example, I use Claude 3.5 Sonnet. The other thing you can do is to reference the Apple documentation by using the at sign. However, since we have the image, that is enough for this prompt. So after running this prompt, this is the solution I got from the model. First, it created the content view. I'm going to expand the window. So we have a navigation view containing all these navigation items. Ideally, we should use navigation stack instead of navigation view. So if you provide the Apple documentation as reference, that will be fixed. But here, I didn't provide the Apple documentation. So you can see here, it is using navigation view instead of navigation stack. The next file is the tab view. Since I specified there can be multiple files, you can see here, we also have a tab view.swift containing the tab items. So let's minimize the window and go to the Xcode project. I will go to the project navigator and go to this directory. Over here, I will control click and add a new group. Let's call it Notion Home. Then by going back to Alex, over here we can add the files generated by the AI model directly to the Xcode project. So let's select this folder and come to Alex. I'm going to first add the content view by clicking this icon. You can see over here, it added that automatically to the Xcode project. We have an error, I'll come back to that later. Let's go to the next file. So the second file generated is tabview.swift. Since we are still in the group Notion Home, I'll come back to Alex and add this file as well by clicking this icon. That adds the file to the Xcode project automatically. Let's go and fix the error in the generated content view. The reason we have the error is that I have another file with the same file name, content view. So let's rename this file and extract. Let's call it Notion Content View. So I'm going to copy the name and use it for the struct. Also, we want to see the preview. So I'm going to remove this part of the code and add preview. Let's go to the top view and compare that to the image. Over here, I'm going to add the preview also so that we can see it. This is how the screenshot is. And you can see it is the same as what we just generated. If I go back to the code, there are a couple of things we can change here. For example, we can change the UI color and also foreground color to foreground style because foreground color is duplicated. So over here, we can use foreground style. The tab bar is the same as what we have in the image, but you can still go ahead and clean the code a bit. Let's see the other parts by going to the other file. I will bring the image again and compare. From the top view, it added only the ellipses. But once you have the structure, you can just go ahead and add it yourself. For example, let's add the leading view. That is the view you see here, this part. So that is contained in our toolbar. So over here, you can see we have a toolbar item. 
So we can go ahead and add another toolbar item to the toolbar. For the placement, we want to put it at the leading part. This modifier has been duplicated. So instead of navigation bar trailing, you can put top bar trailing. It will be the same position. And also, we remove this and put a period and see the other options. So for this example, we are going to use top bar leading. So as I said before, if you generate the code, you should go through because you may get some duplicated code. So you can just go through and change whatever you need. Let's add the items in the leading side of the top bar. You can see over here, we have an icon. So let's bring SF symbols and search for a dot square. That is this one. Or press shift command and C to copy the name and go back to Xcode. So from the image, you can see we have an H stack. So I'm going to add an H stack here and change the name of the image to the one that we have a dot square and remove the text field or change the color to for example system gray that is the foreground style or let's leave it as secondary next we will create a v stack containing the name and the email so i'll come here and add a v stack let's put for example alex at gmail.com so this is how you can go ahead and edit the code further to add the things that were not added and remove the things you don't need and also remove any duplicated code. For example, with the V stack, you can see from the image, it is aligned to the left. We can come here and add the alignment parameter and use the lead inside. You can now see the name and the email are now aligned to the left. If I go to the image again, you can see this part is also mixing, but you can add it. Since we specify in the prompt that the middle part is a list, over here it added the list and the detailed pages for each of the list items. So we can now go ahead and modify the detailed pages. We can also go further and add interactivity to any of these icons on the tab bar. But I'm going to leave everything here. So this is how you can create a screen from a site like Travel or go to a site like Movin and take any screenshot and use it as reference for your UI generation. I'm going to do more videos about using Alex for iOS UI design. For example, you can pick multiple images and upload them to the Alex chat window to generate multiple screens for your app. So in my next video, we will look at that, how to upload multiple images to Alex and use them to generate multiple screens and UIs for your app.